Trying to finish a down year on an up note and send out a legend on a good note as well. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, previewing the Las Vegas Bowl. We've got Washington from the Pac-12, and we've got the Mountain West Conference champion Boise State Broncos at 12-1 and in this matchup on the first weekend of bowl season. we got uh, Roman Tomashoff on the line from Husky Hall. Roman, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you? I am doing just fine. So a number of storylines to this matchup. And again, not a premier matchup, especially when Washington gave us a college football playoff appearance in the Peach, a Penn State matchup in the Fiesta, and then, of course, a Rose Bowl matchup against Ohio State this past year. Uh, the Vegas Bowl still one of the better games that we have pre-Christmas with a Boise State team showing up at 12-1 and one, and a Washington team despite the five losses, Roman, that, of course, is uh, possibly the best program still in the Pac-12. Uh, I wouldn't I would I wouldn't say anything otherwise. You know, we, we see Oregon in the, uh, in the Rose Bowl. Good for them. Uh, I still – I got a lot of – tremendous amount of respect for the uh, the Utah program, and I wish they would have pulled it out last Friday personally. Yeah, so when you look at this matchup, the obvious thing that stands out, Roman, is uh, the showdown that we have in the storyline of Chris Peterson facing his former program – in his final game as Husky head coach, uh, that that gives it a different uh, vibe, certainly. Yep, I, I would certainly say so. I believe that I, I, I know that I'm I'm not the only one, but I I do believe that is one of the reasons that these teams have matched up. This also isn't the first time they played in that bowl game. That was, of course, in Chris Peterson's first season as Husky head coach. Uh, the Huskies also took a trip to the Las Vegas Bowl. And they lost that year, hoping for a different outcome this year is a great send off for Pete to have his his two teams that he coached. I know that he still probably has uh friends on the coaching staff. I was going to say players, but it's the 6th year of Pete's time at Washington, so I don't think that there are any guys have left over from uh, his recruiting at Boise State. So Roman, do you generally think as though this might be a game that Washington would not overlook because Boise State's not a fair opponent? Obviously, they 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 are a substantial p opponent, but just being disappointed about the five losses that they would normally not be necessarily, or there would there would be a question as to whether they would be mo in, uh, motivated going into this game. But considering it's their coach's last game, maybe that provides a little more juice. You know, that's what I was going to say. I do believe that it being Peterson's last game, that, that that will be substantial motivation for him because we've already seen that Trey Adams and Hunter Bryant uh, will not be playing in the bowl game for NFL draft reasons. Both of them have come off of uh, ACL injuries at some point in their Husky career. So I, I honestly think it's for the better that they're not playing in this game. But when it comes to motivation, I think that especially coming off uh, a somewhat disappointing season in the eyes of Husky fans, definitely in the eyes of players and coaches as well, that there's going to be plenty of motivation to send Peterson out on a high note. So uh, Boise State's had issues at quarterback despite making it all the way through the Mountain West and winning the conference championship over Hawaii in resounding fashion, certainly showing themselves to be by far the best team in the conference. Uh, Hank Bachmeyer was a prized recruit and signee that started off as a freshman, uh, the starting quarterback, nine touchdowns, four picks, but he's been hurt. And uh, Boise State uh, has had to make it to the finish line with a number of quarterbacks playing. Um, do you feel good about Washington's matchup? I know you're still diving into what the Broncos present, and we'll probably catch up with that a little bit more as we get closer to the game time. But in regards to how you match up these teams in Washington, what uh, the Huskies bring to the table against the Boise State? I, I couldn't be more confident in the Husky secondary. We saw Trent McDuffie be named in uh, all Pac-12 honorable mention. Elijah Molden was named in the first team. Uh, I believe that Cam Williams and McDuffie were uh, both named to Pro Football Focus's all freshman All-American team. Uh, shout out to them for that. I believe that Keith Taylor deserves a spot on an all Pac-12 team, but since I, the more Husky film you watch, the more you notice that Keith Taylor just he he plays very quietly, as in. Opposing quarterbacks don't like to throw in that direction. So I believe that if the Huskies can men up really well, just play good defense like they have done in the secondary under Jimmy Lake, then I think that everything's going to be just fine in the secondary form. And we also saw them uh, – we saw, as you said, Boise State uh, trounce Hawaii. The Huskies also look very good in the secondary against that same Hawaii offense early on in the season. 
Yeah, the deep threats to look out for from the Broncos. John Hightower averages over 19 yards per catch, 48 receptions. Khalil Shakir at 60 catches, over 800 yards. And uh, they spread it out with a number of guys, over 25 catches there from Boise State again at 12 and 1. We got Roman Tomashoff on the line from Husky Hall. Please join him as he covers Washington Athletics right there with the rest of the staff uh, as the Huskies prepare for Boise State. Uh, one question I always, always love to ask uh, in these bowl games that maybe maybe not meet the expectations and become more about the bowl practices and preparing for the next football season is who are you anxious to see out there um, uh, for a final 2019 that you're anticipating being a big factor in 2020 for the Huskies? Well, one guy that I'm really looking forward to see is tight end Devin Culp. He is a redshirt freshman this year, and he hasn't gotten a ton of time on the field because they've been using Jack Westover as the H-back, uh, a walk-on, and they've been using, obviously, a lot of Hunter Bryant and Kate Otten. So I'm very excited to see what he's going to do in this game because I'm sure he's going to have a big role. And then one guy who I wrote about him a little earlier on in the week is wide receiver Austin Osborne. He hasn't got a ton of time on, on the field over his first two years on campus. He was a prize recruit coming out of Southern California. And I, he's got one of my favorite high school game tapes that I've ever watched. I, he just rarely, if ever drops the ball. And for whatever reason, he ha he's had a lot of trouble getting on the field. So hopefully they'll find a way to get the ball in his hands and just a few plays in the game. That's, that's really all I'm asking for. So those, those would really be the two guys that I'm looking forward to seeing the most. Who are some of the guys that you're going to see for a last time that uh, you really enjoyed uh, their careers in Seattle? Uh, well, the, the two guys right off the bat are center Nick Harris. He was named the Sports Illustrated's All-American team. He's just been the life of the offensive line of the last two seasons. He's been absolutely tremendous. I don't have enough good things to say about Nick Harris. He's just such a tremendous person, player, all around. And the same can be said for safety Miles Bryant who was a walk-on 2016, barely played, but still carved out a role for himself on special teams his freshman season, moved in uh, nickel sophomore and junior year, and then this year moved over to safety. He's played anywhere the coaches would need him to. Undersized, but he makes up for it with heart, strength, and amazing technique. And even though he only is probably going to measure in around 5'7", 5'8", the NFL Combine, there's definitely going to be a spot for him somewhere on Sundays. And those two guys, it's it's going to be really sad to see him go. Bryant with uh, 66 tackles, second on the team and two interceptions. Uh, Roman, your thoughts about Jacob Eason's performance this year? Obviously much heralded coming out of high school. Uh, started one season as a freshman at Georgia. Uh, actually beat out Jake Fromm the second time around before he got hurt, knocked out of the game. Jake Fromm takes over and doesn't relinquish the job. Eason transfers to Washington, 22 touchdowns, eight picks this year. You know, there. I, I love Jacob Eason as an NFL talent, as a college quarterback. I think that obviously there's a lot of room for improvement, and I not only as a Husky fan, but as someone who follows the NFL draft very closely, I really hope that he comes back for one more season. Um, there, there are a lot of issues that some Husky fans that I've spoken to have had recently when it comes to Chris Peterson's offense and some of the complexity in the play calls and actually, um, why is it blanking on me right now? Hugh Millen, I'm sorry. Hugh Millen has done some really amazing work on, you can watch it on YouTube, about how Chris Peterson's offense has given quarterbacks trouble in the past. Uh, he, he's broken it down with Jake Browning. He's done it this year with Jacob Eason and how it happened during his time as Boise State as well where Peterson has such a complex offense to learn, which is why some guys might not look the same in the offense as some of these players who um, have been in the system for longer. That's why we've seen so much of Andre Bocelli and Aaron Fuller this year. So I'm really interested to see what Jacob Eason would do in one more season on campus. And I'm, I, I can't say that I'm disappointed in this season, but he does have a lot to learn and he's got a lot of potential. 